G'day everyone, I'm artist Wayne Gassman and welcome to my Anzac portrait series. This is a portrait of a very young Keith Bent and Keith began his military career with the Australian Light Horse before embarking for New Guinea as a signaller with the AIF. He's a complete gentleman and it gives me a great deal of pleasure to present to you all part one of Keith's amazing story. I'm Keith Alwyn Bent. Born on the 22nd of August, 1923. Um, as um, a youngster, uh, I grew up at Dalgetty. Uh, my father was a storekeeper and he had a store established in Dalgetty. Uh, he'd come up from Maringula. Um, and the, the, the reason that he had left Maringula was that at that time it was considered that Dalgetty was going to be the Federal Capital Territory. I'm the third son of Charles Nelson Ben and Clara Alma, my mother. I first commenced school of course at Dalgetty at around about the age of six. I can just barely remember the, uh, the first day that I got down and got into the snowy and it was Dad who took me down and it was he who really kicked me off in the swimming in the, and there was ample water in those days, not like it is today. These farmers would bring their stock down from their snow leases as they were known as in those days and in the summertime, they'd take their sheep, cattle up to the snow leaves, and then approaching winter, they'd bring them back down. So that uh, we young fellows sort of always look forward to that. And uh, as they would bring the, the, uh, the cattle, particularly, sheep mostly went across the bridge, but the cattle would always divert and they'd swim across these deeper parts, this deeper part of the Snow River. Well, we'd be on the, uh, on the uh, western side, so that as the cattle would go in, we'd take off too, so we'd grab a tail and get a free ride across the deep parts of the, of the Snowy River. <laughs> I'd like to talk a bit um, Billy Rutherford. You know, Billy was an indigenous person who had um, found I expect uh, or suspect uh, a fair amount of favour with the police department and he, he was engaged in the early uh, years or at the turn of the century he, he was engaged in the delegate area as a, as a police black tracker and um, it was um, uh, around about the uh, 1918, 1919 era that he moved across to Dalgetty and uh, uh, as Dad had started the store there, uh, he became friend with Billy Rutherford and uh, so the, the time would come and I'd perhaps and even the brother I need a haircut so Dad would get a couple of those bigger, larger biscuit tins uh, used in the old days. Uh, we'd sit on that and uh, Billy would cut our hair. Uh, I know he continued with me for quite some time, but then the day the scissors must have slipped a bit and uh, put a snip in the ear and I was very reluctant to go back after that. <laughs> Problems started with Dad in the, in the store and um, there was a bit of a, a break in the family then because this was in the depression years and unfortunately Dad was one of those who uh, just couldn't refuse someone that would come along and spin him a, a hard luck story. It, it was things like this that um, forced Dad to assign 
and uh, it was made bankrupt in roughly 1933, I think it was. And, uh, Dad formed an association with another uh, chap of business band. They did come to Bendock because the Victoria Star Mine was operating in those days and uh, I think they saw perhaps an opportunity there. But that only lasted about 12 months and then uh, Dad moved to Berrydale because a chap over there wanted him to, to manage the store and uh, Dad done that for about 12 months and then he was able to break the father's will to get this money then to buy the store. So he bought the store of Berrydale. So you joined the Light Horse in... July 1941 at Cooma, about a month off turning 18. I joined in that and so Herb and Ted and uh, perhaps Bob Jardine and myself, we, we would get out on the horses for the day and uh, we enact this tent pegging and so forth, yeah. It was very good and of course once we got called into camp as I say and uh, Spent that short period of time at, uh, at Goulburn and then moved to Dapto. We had the, uh, the job there of patrolling the beach and headland from Port Kembla through to Shell Harbour. So all that area along there we used to ride. Where did you go to after you left the light horse? We became now and then as the 7th Motor Regiment. Okay. We weren't dismantled until uh, May in 42. So we went up about May, I'd say we probably had six or seven months at, at Wingham. Right, okay. Yeah, then I went back to Singleton for degree to do a sick school there. And then when I come back, the unit had moved from Wingham, halfway between Wingham and Tari at a place called Collador. Right. Mm. And that was still the 7th Motor Regiment? Still 7th Motor Regiment. Yeah, okay. And mm. then, so what was your next step after well, that? Well, the next step after that was to uh, go up to Gimby mm -hmm. in Queensland, mm -hmm. where we were then became the 11th Motor Regiment. On exercise one night, and they, um, message came through that we had to break camp and be ready to hit the, the train and we were going up to uh, Cairns and from Cairns up to Atherton on the Tablelands and that's where we completed a, a lot of our training there. Uh, time came in the buses down to Townsville and we uh, embarked on the Canberra Anyway, that took us to Port Moresby. Um, we became established in Port Moresby, uh, but something like around about, um, say, seven miles out at the eastern end of what was known as the Jackson's Drome in, in, uh, in, in the Port Moresby area. One night, um, uh, well, I was asleep by now, but this terrific explosion uh, took place. And what had happened was that the, uh, the Coral Sea well, was, was taking place at that time. And as I know, this, this Liberator had started to take off and it had come down the strip, rose to a certain extent, but then went down and the people of Australia never ever knew this but that landed in the 2nd 33rd battalion almost in the middle of that line and it was that <laughs> explosion that sort of you know I, I'm, I'm sure I must have rose a foot out of bed or something <laughs> and that, and the, but anyway there was sort of nothing much done that night from we like we were a distance further on than where they were. But then we were called the next morning and oh, the devastation was, was horrific. 
and uh, you know that there was just so many dead and uh, parts of trucks were met up in trees and where it had blown and one thing and another but uh, the people of Australia never ever knew about that because that was one of the worst uh, and created more deaths than you know any single action sort of thing.